Well, what's going on, everybody? Curtis Wilkerson with Hogsports.com coming to you live once again from the Chase Center. It's it's practice and presser day here uh, on Friday in San Francisco. We'll talk to Eric Musselman. We'll talk to Coach K. Players on both teams here in a little bit. Uh, kind of, it's going to kind of be late when that happens over in the Fayetteville area. So I wanted to come and, and do a preview maybe before that because we're going to be probably overloading you with some some videos and player interviews and things like that a little bit later. Uh, I mean, how's everybody feeling today, the day after knocking off the number one team in the country? I'm personally just hoping to avoid any of that cop on Californian violence that took place in the live reaction last night. That was crazy uh, and awesome at the same time. Hopefully, if you didn't watch that, it's worth going back and checking out the last few minutes uh, of the Gonzaga reaction video last night. Uh, crazy things happen here in Cali, I guess. But at any rate, I mean... Guys, it's been really hard to kind of process everything in the moment here. You know, the emotional high of beating Gonzaga, and then you had to flip the page so quick. Uh, one win away, the Razorbacks are from reaching the Final Four, uh, you know, against Duke. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. So I'm, I'm really anxious to talk to the players and see how they're feeling. Uh, such an emotional win, so huge for the program. Uh, and, and you got to turn the page so quick. That's why this tournament's so difficult to win. And, you know, they call it survive and advance for a reason because there's just no breaks. It's so incredibly difficult to do. And this team showed so much resolve so far, and they're going to be challenged again on Saturday. And, you know, the, the Coach K farewell tour, I mean, it's dominated the headlines all season, and rightfully so. It, it is. It's a, it's a big deal. Uh, he's, a, he's a fantastic coach, but really – could you write a better script if you're an Arkansas Razorbacks fan? I, I mean, think about it for a little bit here. I mean, you've got a team who's really built an identity around being a giant slayer. I mean, the only team in NCAA Division I men's basketball history uh, to knock off an AP number one in the regular season and an AP number one in the NCAA tournament. It, it's happened one time. The Hogs have done it. So, uh, they are very much capable of, of performing in moments like this. So you got them, uh, you know, competing against the bluest of blue bloods in Duke. And, you know, it, 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 was, it was Duke and Coach K who Arkansas beat to get that national championship in 1994. And, I, you know, I think the interesting thing about that is Arkansas fans, I mean, they've been starved as a fan base to kind of recapture those glory days and get back to this point. And Eric Musselman's revived the program back-to-back -back Elite Eights and has an opportunity now, it's almost like a full circle kind of deal to get that elusive Final Four and to do it, you gotta go through Duke again. And, and it's an opportunity to put an end to Coach K's career. That's incredible. So, you know, you'd be talking about ending one legacy in Coach K and really etching your name in history, especially around Arkansas, if you're Eric Musselman and you're able to pull this thing off. I mean, the storylines here are incredible. And, you know, the game itself, in my opinion, uh, it's really a fascinating contrast of styles. You know, on one hand, you've got an Arkansas team that's been excellent defensively, going up against a Duke team that's been a bit of a juggernaut on the offensive end. Both of those teams, I thought, really showcased those strengths last night. I mean, think about what Arkansas did defensively. Gonzaga was the number one scoring offense in the country coming into the game. Arkansas held them 20 points below their season average, under 40% from the field, under 25% from three, turned them over 15 times. It was a dominant performance against the best offense in the country. Um, so you had to feel pretty good if you're a Razorback fan that they'll be able to do that again against Duke. It's interesting, they took on the number one offense last night, they're gonna take on number two on Saturday. And you think, man, that, that's kind of tough the way that works out. But it's interesting, Duke's in kind of the same spot. Last night, they played against Texas Tech who statistically has had the number one defense in the country all season. And Duke put it on them, they shot well over 50% from the field, they shot over 70% from the field against Texas Tech in the second half. They didn't miss a shot in what, the last eight minutes of the game? Is that what I heard? That's absurd. So Arkansas proved it can lock up a top scoring offense. Duke proved that it, could, it can light up a top scoring defense. Uh, so it's gonna be really interesting to see those two things clash 
something's got to give, right? And, 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 you know, obviously that's going to be something that ultimately decides the outcome of this game. But then I think you got to look at the other side of the coin, too, whereas Arkansas, I, I think, is a team that has showed uh, that spurt ability offensively. We talked about it. I think they were better against Gonzaga offensively last night. It was enough to win the game against the number one team. They avoided those scoring droughts. Uh, they came up with some big buckets. Uh, they had some guys step up. We'll, we'll talk about Trey Wade again in a minute. Uh, but Duke, as good as they've been offensively, defense hasn't always been the calling card for this group. They've been vulnerable at times. And I think that if Arkansas takes care of the basketball, because Duke doesn't turn it over, or they don't turn teams over a ton, but Arkansas gets a little, little sloppy sometimes with those unforced turnovers. They can avoid those and just be relentless on the attack, driving it to the rim, getting the defense to collapse, kicking it out, dumping it off to Audis Tony or Jalen Williams for finishes. I think they can have some success against this Duke team offensively. And if they're able to match that with their typical defense, you got to think they're going to be in a pretty good shot uh, or in a pretty good spot to win this game in the end. It, you know, we talk about the contrast of styles, the offense versus defense. It's also interesting just from a personnel standpoint. You know, if you take a look at the rosters here, Duke has those young stars, right? Arkansas, they're, they're an older team. They start four seniors. They're seasoned, veteran, experienced, gritty group, right? The kind of team that you love to root for. Duke, those, that's, that's the diaper dandies, right? They've got those three five-star freshmen. And we think about Keels, uh, Paulo Bancaro, who's an incredible player, uh, and then who's the other one? Griffin. Those three guys. Even some of their, you know, Mark Williams, he's a sophomore. So it's a young team. Duke didn't make the NCAA tournament last year. This is a new experience for them. When you get to this point, I don't think that matters as much. But still, every round they advance, it's, it's, a, it's a new world for them. Arkansas's got guys who've been there, done that. You think about Jay Will, you think about Devo, J.D. Note, and, and even guys who haven't done it at Arkansas but have done it elsewhere. Trey Wade, saw what he did last night. Chris Likes, the moment wasn't too big for him, came in and knocked down those clutch free throws. So it's kind of the experience versus the immense talent. I think it's going to be a really fascinating thing to watch there as well. Again, so many great storylines for this game. It's just going to be incredible. Uh, and, and then the front court, you know, Arkansas has to go from finding a way to contain Chet Holmgren and Drew Timmy uh, to find a way to contain Paulo Bancaro and Mark Williams, that, that's a tall order. I mean, if there was a front court they could probably compete with Gonzaga's, I mean, it would be Duke's. Duke beat Gonzaga. I'm pretty sure that's the case early on in the season. I think I watched that game. It was around Thanksgiving, right? But uh, at any rate, uh, it, it's going to be pretty fascinating to see. Mark Williams, super athletic, uh, physical guy in there inside, every bit of seven foot. Uh, and then you got Bancaro, who's another one of those guys. That he's listed at 6'10". Maybe he's not quite that tall. But he's so versatile. He can put it on the floor. Uh, he can shoot the three and, and obviously uh, can get out in transition and, and can finish inside at his size. Uh, who's Arkansas going to put on him? I'm really anxious to see how that matchup works out. I think you could go a number of different ways there. Um, heck, they had Trey Wade guarding Chet Holmgren. Maybe he gets you know, one of the first cracks on him. You could see Stanley Amude. You could see Audis Tony. I, I mean, that's the thing about Arkansas. They're so versatile with similar sized guys that they can really throw a lot of bodies at somebody like that. That's going to be an important matchup. Um, you know, I, I, I've got to say, the other thing about Arkansas, it's that next man up type of mentality for them. You know, even if they're not efficient, you got to feel pretty good about getting at least, you know, 17, 18 plus from J.D. Note. You got to feel pretty good about getting a double-double from Jalen Williams. He's done it three times in a row in the NCAA tournament. Is there room for those guys to improve offensively in this game? Absolutely, but when Arkansas really puts themselves in the best positions to win games like this, they've got that third wheel that steps up. Last night it was Trey Wade, right? 15 points, he hit those three threes, he was incredible. You think about maybe the Vermont game, the NCAA tournament opener, it was Devo who came off the bench with 14. Chris Likes, who's knocked down those clutch free throws for the Razorbacks. It's been different guys. I wonder if maybe a Stanley Mude steps up in this game. He looked like he might get on a heater last night, was knocking down his jumpers, didn't look like they were going to have any success defending him, but he got in foul trouble. He's going to be hungry for a bounce back performance. I think about Audis Tony, who expels so much energy on the defensive end of the floor that he's actually told sometimes, maybe, maybe just take it, take it a little easy there, Chief, on, on offense. But this is the Elite Eight, and it's balls of the wall. You're going all out. And you could see that relentless effort from him a little bit last night. 
crashing the offensive glass hard. Duke can be vulnerable on the offensive glass at times. Could be good for Aldis Tony. If they're giving up dribble penetration, you think about how adept Tony is as a basket cutter. There could be some good opportunities for those drop-offs. Maybe he's a guy that could sneak in there and give Arkansas a dozen. Who's it going to be? If they find someone, maybe more than one, they're going to be in a really good position to win this game. Listen, when it's all said and done, Arkansas has to block out the noise. They've been so good about doing that this season. The narrative, the national media wants this to be Duke. They want Coach K in the Final Four. And that's fair, right? That's the storybook ending. That's the 30 for 30 that they'll do for ESPN. But Arkansas is writing its own story. And if there's ever a team that would thrive under this kind of situation, it's the Razorbacks who put that chip on their shoulder. They're looking for motivation, looking for those doubters, right? Eric Musselman's putting that stuff in film sessions saying, hey, these guys don't believe in you. They eat that stuff up, they soak it in. So this is a good thing for Arkansas. And then you think about the flip side, the further along Duke goes, how much pressure is building up on those guys? Knowing any game could be K's last. You don't want to be the team that lost his last game. And they could say it doesn't matter or that they don't feel it, but they do. And you can feel it with every round that they move on. So it's another one of those situations where I don't think Arkansas is much of an underdog in this game. In fact, I think they're going to win. I think they've got a great chance to do it. I think it's a much more evenly matched game uh, than maybe some people will give it credit for. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you're the Razorbacks, you're still kind of playing with house money because of this situation with Kay. I think they're going to come out loose. I think they're going to set, out, set the tone with physicality, uh, toughness. They out-toughed Gonzaga last night. They beat him to loose balls. They were physical, throwing bodies around. I think you got to do the same thing against this Duke team. And if Arkansas does that, they'll advance to the Final Four. Could you imagine Razorback fans going down to New Orleans, Bourbon Street for the Final Four? I could. I want to go down there. I want to book my flight now. We got to get past Duke first. It's going to be an incredible atmosphere. There's not a better venue to do it in than the Chase Center. This place is incredible. It's going to be a packed house again. It was lively in there last night. Duke brought a bunch of fans. The Arkansas fans were loud. It's going to be a blast. I'm really looking forward to it. Appreciate you guys tuning in as always. We'll be back with some videos, uh, probably some more stories and things like that a little bit later after we talk to the team, uh, talk to the coaches, and then tomorrow it goes down. Arkansas, Duke, with a berth to the Final Four on the line. Can't wait. This has been Curtis Wilkerson with HogSports.com. We'll catch you later.